Hello again, everyone. It's been a while. Nice to see you again. I'm pretty sure that most of our regular viewers will already fully understand everything I'm about to say, but I'm still getting a lot of the old rockets can't work in space, there's nothing to push on nonsense. Thanks go out to Shadow Falcon, who commented a nice, easy to understand analogy in one of my older videos on rockets. All right, let's get started. Let us imagine a stick of dynamite in space. Now, let's put a brick next to it. If the dynamite were to explode, I'm sure you'll agree that the brick would move in the direction shown by the arrow. This happens because some of the expanding hot gases and particles thrown off by the explosion impact the brick. Energy from these hot gases and particles is transferred to the brick providing the force to accelerate the brick away from the explosion. Now let's imagine the same thing occurring with the bucket instead of the brick. I'm pretty sure you'll agree that when the dynamite explodes, the bucket will behave in much the same way that the brick did. Here's where things get interesting. What would happen if we move the dynamite inside the bucket? Let's assume that this is a very strong bucket that will not be blown to pieces when the explosion occurs. Let's look at the blue arrow pointing to the right. This arrow represents the hot gases thrown off from the explosion that will impact the closed bottom of the bucket. The blue arrow pointing to the left represents hot gases from the explosion that impact nothing, leaving the bucket via the open top. Think about this. The hot gases moving to the right apply a force to the bottom of the bucket. Since the hot gases moving to the left exit the open end and apply no force on the bucket, there is nothing to oppose the force being applied to the bottom, and the bucket moves in the direction shown by the white arrow. Now take a look at the two blue arrows pointing up and down in this picture. These represent hot gases that are still expanding. When they impact the sloped sides of the bucket, more force in the direction of the white arrow is applied to the bucket in much the same way an ice skater propels him or herself forward, pointing the toes outward and pushing off to the side. Now let's take a look at something that looks a little bit more like the inside of a rocket engine. In this image, the circle to the left represents a top-down view of the combustion chamber. In the first side view diagram on the left, we can see that our stick of dynamite has exploded and pressurized the combustion chamber. Hot gases leave the combustion chamber and move through the cone-shaped nozzle. In the next diagram to the right, we can see that in the circular combustion chamber, the same amount of force is being applied to both the left and right walls. These opposing forces cancel each other out and do not affect the movement or direction of the engine. We also see that the gases exiting through the nozzle are continuing to expand. In the rightmost diagram, we see that movement is produced by a combination of the force applied to the top of the combustion chamber and the ice skater-like action of the expanding gases in the nozzle. Now, we've been talking about a stick of dynamite this whole time. That's not really practical. At some point, you may need to slow down or make course corrections. A single impulse from a single explosion really won't do the trick. What we really need is a sustained explosion that can be switched on or off. Enter the liquid-fueled rocket engine. The fuel may be a liquid like kerosene, or it may be a liquefied gas like hydrogen. In either of these cases, an oxidizer such as liquid oxygen is needed. A liquid-fueled rocket will provide a sustained explosion to propel a spacecraft, may be throttled up and down, and may be shut down and restarted numerous times. Well, okay then. We've talked about where the force to move the engine forward comes from, from hot gases impacting the top of the combustion chamber and expanding while passing through the cone or bell-shaped engine nozzle. I hope you've noticed there is one thing we did not mention as a source of thrust. That would be the impressive blast of flames stretching out behind the rocket. This is something that is commonly misunderstood. At the time these flames exit the engine nozzle, 
They've already done all the work they're going to do. The visible flame behind a rocket adds precisely zero thrust. That's right. Looks pretty. Doesn't do anything. Alright, well, that's about it for this episode of Simple Science. I hope you found it to be interesting and helpful to anyone interested in the basic functionality of rocket engines. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to click the little bell so you'll be sure to be notified when new videos are published. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.